what did Ro need or want? Why did she want this three car garage, five bedroom, brand new house? What was that thought process? Before you answer though, because I want to just give a little backstory, a little context. So the house that you ended up with was not the house that you started. It was not. It wasn't even my first house. It was not the first house. And so that's why I want to back up a little bit because there's a story behind how you ended up in the house. I think we may have told you, but I'm not sure. So the first house you got, I don't remember which floor plan it was. Um, it started with a B, I think. It was a yeah, Bristol. The Bristol, thank you. It was the Bristol floor plan. I got in there. You were content. It was fine. You, you it, it was a house. It was yep. fine. And then, so it ended up happening with the house that you ended up getting. So that was a house that we also had clients under contract for. Yep. And they had gone in with Mark yep. um, and kind of built, picked everything and, and built this house. Good choice. <laughs> and so um, they decided to do some real shady business by working with us and another realtor. So just what goes on behind this one. I will tell you guys what really goes and on. And so I remember, and now keep in mind, like these were clients that we got them into the house that they were all already in. Yep. Yeah. Um, we should have known there was flags when they had listed that house with another agent and we were supposed to list it, but whatever, it's not a big deal. Maybe a few weeks before the house was supposed to close, they just sent a text like, hey, we want to terminate the contract because this house is not meeting our needs. They picked everything in that. They had, they had gone to the contract back in January of 2021. I had sat in a design center with them. Um, you know, as we saw a three-sided brick, gorgeous home. Gorgeous. And so, gorgeous. so we're like, what happened with that? So he was like, what happened with we, that? We were in Ikea. <laughs> we were, look, we were this in Ikea. This is the story. This is the story. We're in Ikea, cell phones go off, boom, boom, it's client. Hey, we want to terminate. This house doesn't meet our needs anymore. We just want to get out of it. So Mark, as you know, sugary, sweet, nice guy is like, <laughs> oh no, like, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, we, like, we, we got to talk to them, you know, and then me, I'm like, you're right. We do. Ikea shirt over. Let's go to the car so we can talk to them. Yeah. So he's like, he's literally in Ikea. Like what the, we man? are shopping in Ikea. That was the day. And I was like, what the, like, let's go. We're going. He was like, are we good? No, we're done for today. We're going to go in the car. So he knows how I am as far as like, I go from zero to a hundred yeah. like that. Yeah. So he's like, before you just go off, let me figure out what's going on. Mm. I'm telling him, I don't even care what's going on. They want to terminate. And the reason doesn't even make sense to me is BS. So he's trying to keep me calm. And I'm like, look, you could talk to them. You could open up the conversation. The second they say something that I don't want to hear, the conversation is mine. Mm -hmm. Isn't that exactly what I said to you? That's right. So we get in the car, Mark dials the thing. And he's, you know, hey guys. he's like, hey guys, <laughs> I got your text. What's going on? Like, you know, Mark, it's just happy go lucky that I'm sitting here waiting for my moment because I know the conversation is going to be mine because I know that it's inevitable that they're going to say something that I'm not going to want to hear. Yeah. So the guy says, yeah, you know, Mark, we've been waiting so long and, you know, it's just, it's just taking so long. Keep in mind, the house is going to close like in a month, in a month. They've been building since January. So. So I'm sitting here waiting. I'm rocking in the chair now. I'm like, okay, he, and Mark is, Mark is going, really? But guys, you've been doing it for so long. And why would you want to? So the guy says, well, another opportunity um, fell into our lap and we just need to take it. And it's a new home. And they're like, what? So conversation mine now, enough said. So before Mark could even finish, like his next sentence or comment, it's mine. I'm like, so help me, let me understand this. You have a closing date for this house and you're now telling me that you want to terminate this because you want to close on another new construction home that we didn't put you under contract for and that just happened to fall in your lap? Nope, that sounds like it's BS to me. And I think what happened is you were trying to play, I'm going off. I'm like, so um, F you, F your spouse, um, like it, 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 it was, it was that it was like, cause what you're not going to do is tell us how Philly came out. Yeah. What you're not going to do is tell us that you just, a new home just fell in your lap 
during that time and people were bidding a hundred, like that doesn't happen. But it is understandable because I was also frustrated. So the, the process for me for house number one was you all showed me, you know, like compromise on your wants and versus needs, right? right? right. And then I started studying builders mm -hmm. and each builder, I think there were like two or three, yeah. I would study every layout of every builder. Yeah. So that's how I ended up with this particular builder with my favorite choice or top choice was the Coventry yeah. with the cute, sexy window in the bathroom. But I'm like, it's just me. I'm not going to look at myself through the, in the <laughs> shower. Um, number two would have been what I'm in now, which was a good compromise of both. And then number three was the one that I started off with. And it was just a house. But it wasn't my new that wasn't my first yeah. So you arm wrestled a bully my way into a list of what 400 people on a waiting list, which thank you, by the way. And I accepted that home. When I got to see it, when I drove down to see it, it was a pile of dirt. Yep. When I drove into this development, I thought, it's a nice white neighborhood. To which you told me, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I remember, I had more receipts. I went, I think that was July, and I sent another DM saying, I may need to unfollow y'all or I won't make it to close the <laughs> I remember that. Right? Because I'm still following and you're still posting amazing homes yeah. daily. Yeah. And I thought, well, I like that. Like like, that yeah. But I said, I have to commit to my choice. Right. But as frustrated as I was, it would have been easy for me to do the exact same thing. And I did do it, but I did it with y'all. That's right. the only yeah. thing that you guys Well, the difference was that with the other people involved, we did not have a buyer brokerage agreement because... They, they were already clients. clients of ours, like from, we had sold them their other house a couple of years earlier. Okay. So they just, that's where we dropped the ball in a sense that we didn't protect ourselves again behind the front door. It's like, we trusted, we trusted them. Yeah. We, you know, it was, as you, we talked about what you learned throughout the years, technology wise and how to run your business better. That's why we have people sign the buyer brokerage agreement to yeah. protect us. Right. But that house that you ended up getting was, it was an extra car garage. It had a bigger loft upstairs and a primary with a sitting room. So, I mean, you absolutely killed it. But the funny story is that you had changed it. A brand new house. You had done so much after you. Well, she took bought. a new construction home and made it a newer <laughs> new construction home. And so, yeah. um, I mean, so I had a vision for the first house I was in, but I was struggling because it had a media room upstairs, right. which would have been like the equivalent of a basement. So I was trying to map out and visualize again with these design ideas I'd had in my head since 2014. Like, what do I do with that? And then I think the last time I drove by the house, from, I would drive every other weekend to Buck, from Buckhead to see it. And I go, okay, there's wood on the floor and there's a foundation up and okay, it's coming along. Yeah, so I'm going to be out of Buckhead right. any minute yeah, now. Yeah. And the last time I drove by it, I saw the house that I'm in now across, right across the street from it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, good for them. They're done. It's a nice looking house. And what you decided to do was to post that house. As soon as I get home, I see it and I go, is that the same house that I just drove by today? And it said- I think you were in New York. No, I was about to. Because I remember that house, it came up and it was something where it was like, hey, if you want it, yeah, we have on it. Yeah, yeah. But she's got to get you on the contract like that day or the next day or something. I thought you were like traveling from or to somewhere. And then you. Not that day, but maybe like within yeah, that week. It was very, I know it was like, hey, do you want that? I did rush to have to drive down and see her to make sure I got it. Because home. they took, once that contract terminated with the clients that we had on it, they said, bro, do you want it? We were like, well, do you want it? Because I had the free car. I was like, that's where relationships really matter. Because that's how we were able to bump yeah. you from the wait list that existed to like, she wants to put her on it. And that's the difference between, I guess, going through brokerage versus like, yeah. the Redfin agent that I would not. Have. Have. She could show me the house, but it's everything. not like she, she has any get ties it. to get yeah. me ahead of anything. So. I want to get into, I feel like, you know, what we're trying to talk about here is it's not just a transaction. It's about relationships. Uh -huh. And I remember, I want you guys to talk about it as the very stressful culmination of we're about to close on the house. I feel like there was some kind of conversation where Roe, talk to Kurt and there was almost like this 
energy. They were absolutely linked after this conversation. So if you guys want to talk a little bit about it, it was, well, it was definitely the lender that was involved was, I was not a fan of him. Me neither. Um, and he just was never available, never could answer any questions. Like it just was a disaster. Yeah. And so behind the scenes real quick. So there was an issue with the appraisal of your house. Yeah. And what they were doing, this lender and the on-site agent, they had concocted this plan where the house didn't appraise and behind the front door, I told them months earlier, it's not going to appraise. Like I told them that and they can no, it will appraise because we're going to have X amount sold before. So I had already said that's not going to appraise for that, but okay. So fast forward to it not appraising, what they did was they got in front of me by basically like just telling you, you had to make up the difference. And so behind the front door, behind the seat, it was like, no, the F she's not. I told you it wasn't going to praise. You're not. She, so it was like, well, we have to, it's the comps. And I said, so if you want the comp, then what you do is that you're going to give her the money in the closing cost so that she's not coming out of pocket anymore. It went through this, that, and the third. It got escalated here. I didn't really see a lot of that. You weren't told you about it. I think I shared it with you, but you weren't seeing it in real time. And so they had the building manager, this man, the region. And I'm like, I don't care. It, you're not going just because you want the comp. How bad do you want it? Because she, and I'm bluffing when you're right. She's prepared to walk away. My, she would have been like, but I was. But you were in Buckhead. So that's how I'm <laughs> like, get so, get out of here. So they ended up, they ended up working out that way where they got the comp, you got more money, um, you know, in the closing cost. But there was that stress, the stress of you relocating. Um, I think you had some stuff going on personally. And I think I was pulling in to the garage and you just started talking and then all of a sudden the voice cracked and then you were just like, hey, I'm doing this all by myself, Kurt. And that's just, you don't understand what And I literally was on the phone like, uh, like <laughs> I was like, what do I do? Like somebody's crying. Like I don't even react to tears. Like, but in that moment, I was like, this is the woman that has been so like put together, polished, like just damn near flawless. It's like having a meltdown and it was like in that moment for me, that's when I was like, oh no, like I actually feel her pain and I don't even feel people's pain, but I felt instantly connected to <laughs> you. Connection. And I came in, I remember telling Mark, I was like, we'll just cry. And like, <laughs> I kind of like, I, I think we bonded. And he was like, you bonded with somebody? <laughs> and it just, it was like, yeah. And then what's funny is, and fast forward a little bit to the orientation of the, the final walk or whatever. And that was the first time I was going to meet you in person. Yeah. Mark wasn't there. That was the very first time. I remember I walked in, kind of like, okay, I'm going to meet this blonde bombshell. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen her on Instagram. I'm going to see the real thing now. And I remember I walked in. I came up from behind. You were at the island with the builder or whoever. And I kind of, like, tapped you. Like, because I was excited. You you went. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, oh. I thought we bought, like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, what can we that? You did. It was like a look up and a... Oh, I do remember. Because... I do remember why. Because... So the lending piece was... Trust. Trust. Strike one. Yeah. But I think the day that I called breaking down, I was like, I'm a week before closing. No one said a word to me. Right. Um, and I literally like freaked out. And I thought something doesn't feel right. So I just start calling and texting around. I call the lender. I call the... On-site agent. On -site agent. Uh, yeah. And no yeah. two people are saying the same thing. Now, as a project manager myself, right. there's a process, there's yeah. a sequence of events right. that has to get me to point A to point B. And I said, everyone's lying to me right now. So I cried because I really wanted to curse you out. But what I didn't realize is that you were out of the loop the yeah. whole time. People were talking directly to me and not copying in the representative. You represented me. Intention. And that's what people don't understand is like, we're... Our responsibility is to you, the buyer, but we're only as good as the other party, the other, what they call co-op. Yeah. And if they're not being honest with us and they're not, he'll pull up. He'll pull, he's well, been known to pull I up. Did. And you were he pulled up. He reassured me. Kirk said, you know what? I got this and I'm going to talk to people. Right. I just didn't trust that either at yeah. that moment. Right. So I slap my computer down, get in the car and pull up on the onsite agent. I'm like, let's walk. Hey. And I said, we failed an inspection when I rushed to pay for mine, which perhaps theirs didn't. I said, how? And she's huffing and puffing. And I told this person and I said, let's walk. Show me this house. And I was already sneaking into the house every So you knew weeks. what was. I had receipts in yeah. the phone, a video. I said, okay. Th and they left like an on-site sheet of like dates. Yeah. So I'm, talk to me. 
And she's like, well, the trim, like, you know, the trim that they have on the molding. I said, you don't fail an inspection from trim. You know where I learned that from? The Asian in Seattle. Right. So I said, what is the problem? Then she said insulation. I said, yeah, but I can move it into a house without any of that That's stuff. Yeah. I turned to my right. As soon as you walk in the front door on the right side is a kitchen. This kitchen, there were no appliances. You know where your appliance came from? Behind the front door. So they had to go take, to the model. take to the, model. the appliances out of the model house to put them in your house so that you can close on time. Because yeah. so you were like, I have to close by that. Because you wanted, to, you had to get out by a certain time. Yeah. So yeah. they were like, by all means necessary. So for for those who are in the the market to buy a home, and you're like in the midst of transition from relocating to renting, renting, you have a lease, and I was in the midst of breaking the yeah. lease. You know, now for me to renege and say, oh yeah, the the builders late on the date that they committed to. I don't set the date of when I move into my home. They tell me, and I work around that. I had appliances that I was buying yeah. in route to an address that also changed. Yeah, they changed, changed the an address. I knew sooner. There's so many new things. This culmination of things that was just like uh, you had your emotional show of errors. I was just bursting and you at broke the down that day. But that's when you guys connected. I felt like well, look, I thought we did, and so the last day I showed up, and I was like, <laughs> no, we like, did. And I had put a gift for y'all in my Amazon cart, but because of this day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We really fought, no, but you made up for it. I did put it back it. in, but I, I was a little salty. Yeah. Just not to any really? one person. But there was the stress. Just like the stress that I just yeah. wasn't prepared for. So new construction is not always, you know, especially you bought when supply chain was all out of whack. That's right? very important. You're just yeah. coming out of COVID. So everybody thinks that it's just this like blueprint of like, okay, you go on the contract, you close on this date, but there are so many different factors and different stresses. And, you know, hopefully at the end of the day like we talked afterwards it was like you understood from our perspective and the representation and the relationships mattered right because they they you know i think that afterwards it was a, a situation where i don't know if they actually ever really owned their part i don't think they ever um, owned it. you only have so much power uh, as far as the other side yeah. of the and for us, it was always, especially for me, because I did feel like I really connected with you. Yeah. So for me, it was very important for you to know that, yeah. for you to know that like, just, 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 I was going to bat like you wouldn't believe, literally cursing people out, <laughs> like pulling up. I pulled up, like pulled up. And I want, it was just important for me to know that you knew that at the end of the day, even though you didn't know while it was happening. So is that something that you would think other brokers or agents no, 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 absolutely no. They would just let I mean, there are some, some, but that's the difference again. Yeah. This all is all about is like people that care, that care, the relationships are important and actually have the experience and know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. There's some agents that may have wanted to do something, but just have no experience even knowing what to do. And for me, it's like, I'm going to call the CEO if I have to. Like, if you can't give me what I want, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to get what I want. It's just that we don't, we don't talk to that lender anymore. That's just, yeah, yeah. there's no relationship with that. No, but I remember you cautioned me, like, I may have to go around people as yes. a CEO. And I said, do what you got it. And, I, and then you did. You did. So another thing we want to talk about, and I think this is really important to tie all this together, is you talked about your story of what it was like to get the home, what the experience was like leading up to it and the stresses involved mm -hmm. and having owned another house. But for this particular house that you did the deal with for us, um, what we want to share with the audience, what was, what are some learnings will have you learned by being a homeowner? And we could talk, touch upon some of the projects you've done to the house as well. Sure. So I think the most important thing is it's a lot of work. Uh, discipline, right? It's a lot of work, a lot of discipline. Um, I think, you know, my journey that I just talked through kind of helps, you know, the foundation of just being disciplined from a fiscal responsibility perspective. Um, of course, my first home, the starter home taught me, I didn't have to do a lot of maintenance on the house. A lot of it was covered through my HOA fees, but with this house, I'm on the hook for everything. Yeah. So you this, definitely avoided uh, our warranty. Even I'm was sorry. <laughs> Can I help you with but that? The house looks amazing. The house looks amazing. amazing. You've gotten you. a lot. What's your... What was the, uh, what's your favorite home improvement project that you've done since you've done so many? That's so hard. 
Um, so the first room that was done was the sauna. I didn't even have a bed. Who has a sauna in that Only row. I had a squat built. Um, that's, that was the outcome of COVID just from sitting 24 hours, yeah. damn near 24 hours a day. So my posture was off. I was getting massages like three or four times a week on the West Coast. So I wanted to continue that. Sure. And one of the good things about Atlanta is a lot of people travel. So I found a massage therapist who travels, yeah. hairstylist, nail tech. So I kind of wanted to set that up first nice. and ask backwards. Um, after that, I started, I had the vision of the closet. Okay. So which would make sense. My primary closet is, it was a hallway that connected through kind of looks like a living room in a bedroom. Really two separate closets. Yeah. I remember that. And on each side of this hallway was a door and another door to two separate closets, more like a his and hers type style. And I'm like, well, there's no he right now. <laughs> so I can make room for myself. Um, and I blew the walls out. I found a, a good, a great contractor through one of my hairstyles who recommended him. And we did the floors, we did some marble finished floors, we did uh, gold leaf ceilings, and then I hired the same team that I use, or same company, different team. Uh, California Closets did their retrofit of the closet, but that design, so I, I bought the house, closed on it in October. Yes. All the deposits were paid by the end of December wow. of 2021. Wow. So the designer who did the first floor level, the interior design who did that, took care of the contracting. I took out the floors, the marble floors down the stairs. I had never seen that before because <laughs> this was this beautiful brand new floors, like yeah, revel floors. floors. But, and then I remember, oh, I, I was, uh, when I was doing my videos and stuff, I was like, oh, these cabinets, they're in like the bluish gray. What did you do? I took the floors out. <laughs> and that wasn't part of the original contract. Right. I think I had just contracted out to do furniture, um, the media wall, which is the central focal point of the room. And then I had a whole other wall with the fireplace, a gas fireplace. Yes, yes. But I didn't want to mess with the gas. I'm like, let's just decorate it. So that was really it. And maybe like a couple more pieces of furniture in the kitchen, family room, dining room. Wait. Um, change the whole lighting, change the but cabinet color. By the time we got through the media wall, the floor is just, it wasn't good. All right, all right. So we were like, take that out, <laughs> some piano key stairs up. Uh, we went all out. Um, and the, I think I was the first house to sell on that strip on, on in the yes. division, part of the division that I was in. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my neighbors were driving by still looking at their houses, waiting for them to be finished. And they're looking at my house being gutted out and they're like, does she not like it? Is that a damage? <laughs> what happened? Should I change? All I'm right. like, no, 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 no. I just need to get this place as comfortable as possible. Because to me, being fully remote, quarantine, I welcome it now. It's like, I don't have to go anywhere. So uh, I purposefully had or or decided to go with two separate contractors. So each yeah. had a different jurisdiction. One had first floor. The other one had the primary closet. Um, just so I could get a feel for just how contractors are. That's like a big yes. point that I hear a lot of yes. home buyers, whether you're first time or uh, resale. Yeah, three quotes, they say. Yeah, you want to get a difference of opinion, but you also, I just wanted to test out like how professional they were, how if they had the communication skills, they were clean. Yeah. A lot of them come in and your house looks worse than oh. when you started. Like, uh, And I ended up preferring the contractor I used in the closet upstairs. Um, Which is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I took it time. I took it day by day. Like I, I had kind of like a project timeline, if you will. Of like, it was just all done in a month. She took it no. day by day, but it was done in 30. <laughs> I, I staggered them out. I wanted the first floor done. So that was primary. And then I wanted them to focus on the upstairs. So the primary um, closet in my room, but because of the delays, supply chain issues, they ended up overlapping, but I just didn't want a lot of people in my house. All right. Um, another thing I would tell people who are embarking on um, renos uh, as well, renovations, mm -hmm. don't stay in the house. Like the dust mm. killed me. Good. I good. wish I would have moved out or stayed somewhere temporarily, but the work took about six months wow. start to finish to get through all the big stuff. And, you know, some of them just weren't professional in terms of like covering up my belongings. I lost a curate, I lost a toaster, I lost a lot of stuff just because they were rushing through yeah. things or just not, you know, of my, of my own stuff so i remember when you unveiled it to us i think again this is talking about how you connect with people and after everything you just described how stressful it was 
I think when you had a chance to step back and kind of get to know us, you know, a lot of times after a transaction, a lot of, you will never hear from anybody. And a lot of agents, here's your Starbucks gift card, right? <laughs> we do the bag here. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, I remember the moment when I connected with you, it was like, she was like, I want to have you over to kind of see what I did with the house. I might find a little Hey Guys tour with it too. But, <laughs> um, and I walked in and it was like a professional chef had just wrapped up and everything was laid out. Yeah. And it was like, I wanted to do this just to say thank you. And I was like, wow, this, this is why we do what we do. And nobody had ever done that for us before. Mm -hmm. And so I could get emotional just thinking about it because it's like, in, in this profession, you you get taken advantage of so many times. We just talked about how you even got that house, how we were screwed over by our family members, right? Yeah. And here is this, this woman that would go on you know, make you get into, you know, started your business and have, has this amazing place to have her family travel to. And we're about to get into the holidays and all that kind of stuff year after year. And the appreciation that you, um, you gave us was just, it really meant a lot. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, you're spot on. I think, you know, we wished that every client turned out to be like you, but they don't some, some have. Um, and I think, with that said, so that I don't get emotional again, uh, we're not going to do that. Is that a tear? No, no, I'm not going to do that. So this big house, because you have a big house for a very petite woman. <laughs> <laughs> the bombshell. The bombshell. Um, what are you doing with all that space? Because it's a lot of house. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, on the weekdays, I'm in the office upstairs, um, which is now kind of transitioned into my fulfillment center, my creative space for my book publishing company, um, but predominantly for my brand, Manjeri Skincare. Manjeri is named after my grandmother. Uh, it's my baby. Um, just landed our first retail partnership in New York City, so I get to all calm for that. Thank you. And, you know, I mean, hopefully I'd like to grow it out of my house and get it to, you know, full-time fulfillment. Bacchus and um, fun products. Yeah, we are on all social platforms um, at Manjeri Skincare. Uh, the website is manjeriskincare.com. We're on Amazon now. Okay. We'll be in um, Flying Solo, New York City, uh, the beauty division, in well, December of this year, December 1st. So I'll be back in New York nice. to go promote and launch that. But yeah, hopefully it'll be everywhere. Um, we are expanding out to the international markets. Right now we only sell in the UK, but uh, for a a little thing that I gave birth to only a few months ago. It's definitely taken up a lot of my time, but it's picked up very, very quickly. So I'm grateful for that. Well, so we're, we're proud of you. And um, here. I think that we've all come a long way yeah. in a year since we met. Um, but just watching, it's been a while. But watching <laughs> you, I mean, like you said, fulfillment center, you're like just What's watching your word? growth and seeing like how much you evolve from that woman who I did not even want to have the consultation with. <laughs> Um, so here we are now, uh, no, seriously speaking, very proud of you. Um, uh, yeah. keep doing your thing. Um, we can vouch for it too. We had a joke, internal joke that you asked a question, how long you take a shot for? Yeah. We said 10 minutes. Um, uh, since that grapefruit one, it's up to 15. Yeah. <laughs> when you try the coconut, it'll be longer. Maybe 20, 25. It'll be one. longer. You would have to do like a wellness check in the shop. <laughs> Well, number one, thank you so much for being the very first guest on the Hot Front Door podcast um, with us. Yes. And as I guess sort of a, a token of our appreciation for you allowing us to tap into who Rove is and what Rove is about, um, we're going to give you an opportunity to come behind our front door just a little bit longer. Yeah. What is, I'm scared to ask this, but what is one question that you want to ask Mark and Kurt that the public would not know. So behind our front door was one thing that come and knock on the door. So three's company. Yeah, my age. Yeah. What, 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 is one, what is one thing that you really would want to know or want to ask Mark and Kurt that we'd be more than happy to, I think, share with you? Uh, 
feel like I know everything. No, <laughs> but that, um, no that's a good, uh, I think I have a good question for that. So I think given both of your backgrounds and experiences, it didn't start with real estate, right? What are you thankful for? What makes you, what's the drive to, for both of you to keep going where you're grateful every day? Because mm. like you said, it's a thankless job, right? So yes. for me, I looked at, and I, for, it's, the manifestation is just one element. I have to be grateful for everything I do, everything I have, and everything I don't have. Yes. And if you don't come in with that mindset, you'll never appreciate anyone else's sacrifice, right? Yeah. So what, what is the, the driving force or motivation that keeps you in this industry, which is heavily saturated, that yes. is competitive and all of those things. You want to go? Um, yeah, I think that for me, it, it could be a long answer. So I'm going to try to keep it short, <laughs> but been through a lot in my life and, uh, it's exciting doing it with your, your partner in life. Um, to know that you are, you are as a team, as a business owner, there's another level of pride. We talk about a lot pride in um, real estate and being a homeowner, being able to be on that journey with somebody mm -hmm. along the way um, and sharing in those moments, setting them up. I think we didn't delve too deep into it, but there's a dynamic with us, right? Obviously, I'm the white guy. <laughs> He's a black guy, right? And I, but... Being in a relation with, relationship with somebody that is of a different race, we talk all the time about generational wealth and the gaps in it. Yeah. And so there's a pride in like just helping a community rise up. And I think I've just always had that personality where people can relate to me and be able to connect with people one on one. And that's what I'm super excited about our relationship and what it what it transpired to be. It's a good question. Um, I would say that obviously just being able to be in business and in partnership with my real life partner, that is definitely um, like just top for me. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I honestly, I think having a very lengthy corporate background, being an executive, I never felt like my contribution really mattered outside of whatever that particular deliverable was. Mm -hmm. um, in real estate world, in Greenhouse ATL world, um, I actually see like what I do. I see the impact that it has when you know we've closed on houses with people years ago, and now like they've had their first kid in a house, and mm -hmm. we call ourselves the uh, the uncle, the uncle, yeah, uncle. Yeah. <laughs> and and even when yeah, I mean we just got invited to you know um, baby shower a few weeks ago. Yeah. Like those are the moments that bring value to what I do, yeah. fulfill us. I think they it fulfills us in a way where it takes it beyond just it being a transaction, and I think that. You know, for a lot of people, they get into it. Maybe it's money. It's like, I want to make money, so I do real estate. But for me, it's like, well, I've made a lot of money. I've, you know, that's not really the driving factor. It really is knowing that I'm going to have an impact in somebody's life, knowing that I am in some ways breaking the generational um, wealth curse, because now this is somebody for the first time that they're owning a home and they're like three or four generations in and they're the first one. Um, and I think just people like you that stay connected in a real way, that mm. means so much, um, really does. that means so much. And I think if there's any other real estate professionals that are watching, they'll probably agree. I mean, a lot of us, not all of us, a lot of us work really, really hard for our clients. A lot of us do. And I think that you don't see a lot that goes on behind a, a really solid agent or a broker. They're going to be working and doing things that their client doesn't even know they're doing for them. Mm -hmm. But it's my goal to make sure that the client is happy at the end of the day, they got what they wanted, and it's just even more, I'm more fulfilled when the clients stay in touch and we stay connected in a real way after the transaction, so. But it's more so the partnership too, because you don't really get a chance to take, like I work remote, so the work stays in the house, but I lock the door. Yes, yeah. You have, you know, a lot of the work that you do here in yes. the same place that you also live. Yes. 
how does the how do you make sure to protect your relationship, your partnership? Because if you have a disagreement in business, yeah. you go to it's, bed angry. I mean, it spills over. Yeah. It spills over. <laughs> it does. I mean, it, I think, I think, but we know we know each other's core. Yeah. So I know that no matter what the argument is, no matter what we're not aligned on, I know that there's no malicious intent. I know there's no like deceptiveness. It's just we don't agree, and that's just human nature. So. Uh, but no, it, it's, I mean, we are always together, right? And so there are times when it's like, okay, you go sleep in Ariana's room because like, it's just not feeling like, Yikes. I mean, you know, but, but that's, that's real. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like he's not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. It might be for the night, <laughs> but it's like by the morning, we're going to hash it out and be back to business. Like we need to be. So yeah, 15, 15 years in, 15 years in, I don't think we're going anywhere. So, <laughs> um, so I think I got a little bit of toast, toast. Thank you for being our first guest. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Cheers.